I know you're out there. I can feel you now. I know that you're afraid. You're afraid of us. You're afraid of change. I don't know the future. I didn't come here to tell you how this is going to end. I came here to tell you how it's going to begin. I'm going to hang up this phone, and then I'm going to show these people what you don't want them to see. I'm going to show them a world without you. A world without rules and controls, without borders or boundaries. A world where anything is possible. Where we go from there is a choice I leave to you. It is the red pill. I'm Steve Crawford. I took a uh, sabbatical for a couple of months. Was uh, black pilled for a little while there. And uh, then I decided to uh, stop feeling sorry for myself, stop crying into my pudding, and get back at it. And tonight, I have three of my favorite people that I love talking to. I love just about everything that comes out of their mouths. And uh, they're, they're just incredible. Dan Willis, how are you doing, Dan? Stephen, uh, you've gathered together uh, some of my absolute favorite people as well. And uh, this, is going, this is going to be a... Uh, a stellar show. I mean, what we're going to be talking about. I got goosebumps just thinking about it. Uh, Laura Eisenhower, how are you doing, Sunshine? Hi, I'm doing pretty well. Thank you so much for pulling this together. It's just incredible, very surreal to just all of a sudden, like, boom, be in front of two uh, of my favorite people for sure. And and you, Stephen. This is well. Thanks for putting me in there. <laughs> this is a bucket list for me. I, and, and Michael, how are you doing tonight, Michael Sala? I'm great. Thank you for having me on the show. And great to be with Dan and Laura again. Yeah, like I was saying, mm-hmm. this is like a dream team for me because between the three of you, we could talk about just about every single theorize at the very least about just about every subject out there. And uh, so that that's what uh, tonight's going to be about. Now, Michael, Dan was telling me, and actually I was reading your article. You had the article come out. Let me bring this down here. Cabal leaders go to Antarctica, and this is freaking me out because if it's if it's real, then damn, you know. Uh, let me get back up there. Cabal leaders go to Antarctica to surrender to extraterrestrials in Earth Alliance. Now, um, before we get into what the story is all about, where where did you happen to come across this story, Michael? Uh, I saw the story. Um, uh, ben Fulford wrote about. Uh, his sources saying that uh, there were a group of world leaders that went to Antarctica, that they were surrendering. So I thought that was fascinating. And I then saw um, a, a, a Joseph Farrell also talk about the Antarctica visits. And so I thought, well, there must be something to this. And so I came across this article in a paper called The Void, uh, a British alternative news site, and it had four tweets, uh, allegedly from uh, Klaus Schwab, uh, Christina Lagarde, and and two others with a uh, a tech, a internet technology company, Mm -hmm. and uh, they all talked about having gone to Antarctica. Well, it turns turns out that those tweets uh, that were being cited we're kind of like disinformation covering up some real event that actually happened in Antarctica. So something did happen there. Uh, A a group of world leaders, the cabal, did go to Antarctica. There were some negotiations. There there was some surrender agreement uh, that was made. And then the deep state tried to cover that out by putting out disinformation, uh, these false tweets, talking about these leaders going to Antarctica. So uh, I think this is the way in which the deep state works is is to kind of like muddy the waters because the truth was coming out. And so they they tried to cover their butt and make it look as though nothing really went down. But, you know, my other sources were saying that, yeah, definitely something did happen in Antarctica. Elena Danan, who I've been working with, uh, she, she, she did some uh, communications with her, uh, off-world contacts, um, and also heard uh, uh, s- some of the other more mainstream uh, people talking about 
this this trip to Antarctica. So yeah, definitely something was up, and looks like there's there's been a, some sort of surrender negotiation happening. Yes, that that's mind bending, uh, Dan. Uh, well, what do you want to add to that? Like I'm I'm like shaking, just thinking, man, please let this be real. You know, Dan, what do you have to uh, say about that? Oh, <laughs> well, this is this is the you know to me if it's real, and and there's a lot of collaborating evidence that indicating that it's real. This is the most incredible good information that you could ever imagine in this lifetime. You know, you know, Michael and I. You know, since 2001, you know, he's been researching documents, witnesses, and I have two in my own small way, not to the level that he has. But when you put all this together and then you have the secret space program people coming out, you have people like William Tompkins, you have Gary McKinnon talking about Solar Warden program, a lot of indications that this is real. And then you have the latest uh, Galactic Federation of Worlds contactees that have implants that are getting direct communications to the Galactic Federation uh, people that is corroborating with other, many other indications. And Michael can go into much de greater detail. But the fact that if we were to imprison these people or execute them, the Dark Cabal, uh, we would have a tremendous upheaval on this planet, but for to be There'd able be to a party. take them, there'd be a party, that's for sure. <laughs> but to be able to take them, I mean, how excellent is this to be able to take them to Antarctica, put them through a portal to another galaxy, to a prison planet where they have everything that they need. But the agreement would be for, you know, during this transition to be able to help wean us off of the dark system that they've created, the financial system, the medical system and everything, so that uh, it could be transitioned in in, in the least uh, upheaval way, you know, for all of humanity. Because, you know, we've been living in a Truman show of all this reality that's been hidden from mankind. And so... Um, uh, there's a lot of indications this is real, and uh, to me, it's the it's the most exciting news I can ever imagine. If uh, if it can, and it will play out, I imagine in the in the month ahead or two, we'll probably see some indication. Even though things look pretty uh, like they're ramping up uh, ramping up their dark agenda pretty quickly lately. Right. So do you you think in the next few months, at least, maybe next year, we should be starting to see these politicians and celebrities and such uh, just disappearing without a trace? Uh, or do you think they'll get left behind clones? And actually, let's go to Laura's opinion for, for a moment here. Laura, uh, what do you think about uh, this story? And have any of your contacts uh, told you about these things? Uh, my contacts are pretty much right in front of us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and Michael and Dan and Alex Collier and uh, man, I just, yeah, I've been keeping up with all of it. And what's really wild is uh, what we're dealing with as far as astrological alignments, it all, it all makes sense and it all fits. And, and this goes sort of beyond astrology because we're dealing with um, the sun in conjunction with the galactic center. We're also dealing with the fact that the sun just moved through the 13th sign which is the sign of Phaecus. It's ruled by the ether. And basically what this represents is the opening of portals. If there's any time <laughs> at all uh, in this last 26,000 year cycle or in the last freaking 10 years that it was possible to remove beings and entities, it would be uh, in, in this last week and particularly uh, yesterday and today and for the next week to come. Oh. A major uh, clear, clearing out. I actually just did a presentation about it, a PowerPoint presentation about it that really goes into detail. Um, I did a, a video last night and I just have just been talking about it. And, and it absolutely makes sense that this is completely and totally something that is capable of happening. And it's almost like a D-Day kind of thing where the timing has to be right. And, and right. 
um, and the galactics that know about the timing and, 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 and what's, you know, currently going on as far as the planetary body and where humanity is at and where the dark agendas um, are, are, are pushing things that, that this, it was the most ultimate window of opportunity to be able to create a very, very drastic turnaround and, and um, change uh, to, uh, yeah, really flip this uh, back to where it belongs to get the human um, collective on the right trajectory and to begin to bring in the things that will help to mitigate all the damages from these assaults and to help us to uh, also recover from the losses and the casualties that we've been dealing with. I, I feel an upswing in ways that I haven't for many months. Um, I feel it in my heart. I feel it in my soul. And all the information I've been able to piece together has confirmed um, and very much mirrored the latest intel that um, folks like Michael and Dan and Elena have been bringing through it, and Alex, of course. That's fantastic. And it actually makes sense too. If you think about everything that's going on today, and I don't I don't really want to get into it. I'd like to do one show that I think I could actually put on YouTube without it getting censored. But if you think of everything that's going on today, all of this is just a cover up or could well be jangling the keys to keep us from looking down at Antarctica and what's going on down there. And it, it freaks me out how they all see and unless that's what michael was saying about that this part was the disinfo um about uh, everybody went down just before trump got into office uh it was a john Kerry and uh that astronaut i keep buzz aldrin is that the stuff you were saying you think is the uh the fake info disinfo michael Oh, no, no, they did go down there. Buzz okay. Aldrin and uh, John Kerry and also Newt Gingrich went down there uh, just after Trump was was elected. Uh, Newt Gingrich went down there to negotiate on behalf of the Trump administration with the uh, Antarctic Germans and mm -hmm. the uh, deep state apparatus that they've set, set up down there. And, you yeah, know, that, that's always been a place where major world figures have had to go to uh, negotiate uh, to make deals or to give updates on what's what's happening in in their country so you know we saw um, Barack Obama uh, go down there as well uh, during his administration he went down to Bariloque which is very close to Antarctica oh okay um, so he could have easily and, made the jump i got gotcha. you yeah but but these were negotiations these were where these world leaders were getting their kind of marching orders from the deep state from the antarctica operations but recently you know something has gone down, has been going down in antarctica and i think it it has something to do with uh these uh, negotiations that the that the deep state know that their agenda is collapsing and that uh, they're going to be found out. And so they are now uh, negotiating uh, terms of their surrender. And, um, and one of the things that I found very interesting about Elena's information was that she said that um, back in July, when there were these meetings held um, uh, above the atmosphere of Jupiter, that the deep state was given five months to get ready to surrender, that in that five months, they would have to kind of like get themselves ready to hand over the reins of power, and and then they would have a kind of like a, a sweetheart deal where they would get to leave, take some of their possessions, and go to another planet and start over again. And you know what was interesting was that in in one of the four tweets that were put out that that were actually faked, it referred to July as you know like one of the tweets was. Uh, Christine Lagarde, who's the, the current president of the European Central Bank, she actually said that um, they have five months to uh, to have to get ready for this very important meeting in Antarctica. So you know that's where you, you actually have the the kind of uh, you know where there's smoke, there's fire. It's like so back in July there was an ultimatum. There was a timeline given, and one of these tweets that was actually manufactured referred to that timeline. So I, I think what's happening is that this is an example of of, of how 
the deep state was was really preparing its its um, uh, strategy for how to deal with uh, these negotiations and, and and this kind of surrender process. Uh, but they were putting out disinformation as well to kind of cover their tracks. Right. Uh, but yeah, something definitely did did go down there. And one of the other people that recently come out saying that uh, there was meetings in Antarctica where the deep state had to surrender was 107. And that's interesting because he's got his own sources. He has independent sources, and I think he's very well plugged in to the white hat community. And he was saying the same thing. So, you know, you, you, what you have here then is multiple sources pointing to the same process underway in Antarctica right now. Now, do you think, uh, is it is it just the, uh, geez, how would I put it, the earthly presence, uh, like the people that we see on the news that are being banished, or is it also the people that were pulling their strings or entities, whatever was going on behind the scenes? Well, you know, the, the people that you see on the television screens or in the newspapers, you know, they're not the top leaders. I mean, the top right. leaders you never see. Uh, right. So they're, what they're, I'm they're, saying they're is, are they both they're, all going? They're all being given the boot, or is it just the ones we're seeing? Uh, well, I think the ones that we're seeing are probably kind of like, uh, you know, like they're, they're the sideshow. They're, they're just to distract us. Uh, the, the real uh, power brokers are, are the people that whose names aren't well known, uh, who have enormous power behind the scenes, and, the, and they're the ones that are tied in with the whole kind of black magic um, and with the ET agreements. So, th so these people uh, at the highest level of, of kind of like the, the Luciferian hierarchy, if you like, right. and uh, they're the ones that are having to leave because they're the ones that have the real power. You know, the, the people that occupy uh, public offices, they're not the ones that have the power. I mean, they're, they're, just, they're just puppets. Uh, you know, they make it look as though they've got power, but really, you know, they answer to these guys that are behind the scenes. So the ones that are behind the scenes are leaving. I think they're going to go to a prison planet in another galaxy and, and start over again, kind of like in a, a, a reprise of the Book of Enoch. You know how the Book right. of Enoch describes these 200 fallen angels that arrived right. on Earth um, back in this kind of like... Um, Enochian uh, era uh, or the pre-Diluvian era and, and and basically started interbreeding with uh, with humans and and had this kind of built up this kind of corrupt society that that led to the to the great flood well mm. I, th I think that's what happened to the earth that's part of our history that probably the cabal elites from some other world in another galaxy had to leave and they came here. Earth was the prison planet, you know, right. 20 years ago, 20,000 years ago. And now we've gone through our learning process. You know, we had Atlantis and Atlantis collapsed because of these guys, because of the, the because of the cabal. And we had to go through the learning curve again. But now we've reached this point and we've learned our lesson. And so now we're graduating to the galactic community. And so, you know, th these cabal uh, Satanists have to leave. Mm -hmm. Well, and the Greek uh, mythology about the gods certainly makes so much more sense when you take into account uh, the Book of Enoch or, or even just the idea of the existence of life outside of this world. Uh, even demigods, that would be the children created when these angels or aliens or whatever came down and procreated with our women. That's the demigod. It's trippy. Um, Dan, do you have anything uh, that you want to ask? Like, I, I kind of want you guys to interview each other, <laughs> you know, and I'm just going to go, oh, that's really cool. And and then go, OK, now you. <laughs> yeah, I would recommend everyone listening to go to uh, Michael's site, you know, exopolitics.org and look at the part one, part two. It explains a lot of the details and there's a video there. Um, it's. Uh, Unless you've, unless you've been researching and following this information a lot, it it feels like it's in the realm of, of science fiction. Uh, there's going to be quite a transition. I'm I'm 
incredibly looking forward for them to relinquish control to the mainstream of the mainstream media, uh, the medical system. Uh, I just want to put a Good thoughts out to my good friend Jim Nichols, who was, uh, he did the artwork uh, back with the Billy Myers case because they didn't have any photographs of Simjazi. And I um, actually worked with Dr. Vogel and we were handling the crystal metal samples that Simjazi gave. Uh, I discovered Jim on the internet. His website was hacked <laughs> and I was able to save his site and I. Uh, Put it up on uh, Jim Nichols UFO artist.com. And over the years, we've been communicating a lot, and um, I'm putting up articles for him. And uh, Laura, uh, what do you have to add about that? What do you, what are you finding the most um, insane arguments going on today? In, in as far as you can tell, the most insane arguments. Wow. That, and that's broad. It can be anything. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, geez. Oh, I don't even know where to begin. We could have just the most insane co uh, Olympics <laughs> and see who might win because, I mean, it's nothing but insanity. And, I mean, it's all just the machine, the Matrix propaganda, uh, Mockingbird machine, as we all know, and how it's infected pretty much everything Uh Project Paperclip, all this stuff. So, I mean, it just feels like this is coming full circle, what's going on in Antarctica. But I think the yeah, most insane yeah. thing to me is still seeing this Hollywood charade while children are still being trafficked and abused. And um, the Maxwell uh, court case is largely right. kind of ignored. So while all this is kind of playing out and we're dealing with the next level of if you don't get it yet, I don't know what the F is wrong with you. Um, yeah, because yeah. as the, the tyranny and, and the new world order is being shoved, shoved, shoved further into our faces, um, yes, a great awakening is happening, no doubt. Events are taking place, as you guys um, have been sharing about Antarctica. The astrological alignments are absolutely just reflective of this ability of um, these operations to be successful. But the madness is the humans that are still just not quite uh, getting it and still distracting themselves um, with these sort of, you know, narratives. And it's going to break soon because this is going to be such a large event that nobody will be able to um, distract themselves away from. And that's why I put out a message to Hollywood recently. Uh, and I took it down off of YouTube, but I'm going to put it someplace else. And basically the message was, if you've been blackmailed, just come clean somehow we you know there's greater protection in that um mm -hmm. if you've been compromised or you know you know what's going on or you feel stuck or trapped please you know drop the 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 bs um there's been enough whistleblowers that have talked about uh mockingbird uh, excuse me uh, project monarch um the mk ultra the tavistock institute relationship to hollywood and how it influences humanity and socially engineers um we know this so Absolutely. this is a, a, a time to either come clean and start to do whatever you need to do to recover and rehabilitate from being a part of this um, satanic system and, and uh, social engineering agenda, or <coughs> it's not going to look so good. And right. people right love a comeback story. So. Was, was when the Antarctica stuff, you know, started to come out and they really are being pushed into a corner. So I guess I, I'll leave it at that. But the insanity to me is, um, how uh, the facade is trying so hard with all its might to still hold itself up. Like we should give, um, uh, I don't want to be derogatory, but why would we give a crap about the next, um, you know, makeup product or, or movie coming out when the greatest priority right now is to save this planet? And anybody that thinks doing anything but putting their attention fully and completely on this issue and the issues at hand, um, to me, is going to be the ultimate uh, way we crumble the matrix when people start to realize that, um, you know, everybody has to stand up and we have no time to do anything else. No time to watch movies, no time to be uh, pushing the celebrity thing. Everybody's got to jump on board and join this greater army and team of light in order to take down these guys and to protect our future generations. And anybody who's not involved and stepping up and advocating, um, I feel... Uh, 
their days are numbered. The the crazy part to me, I guess, is those that are still hanging on to that old paradigm and that old facade and that old system um, that, that is collapsing before our eyes. You know, I, I get it, too, because I always I, I used to watch Entertainment Tonight religiously. And my ex-wife would ask me why. And I said, because I plan on being famous. If I'm going to be hanging out with these people, I should know some stuff about them. That's how wrapped up I was and brainwashed myself. It's it's hard for when when you think you know what you know, it's hard to let go of that. So many people would just feel such a sense of relief if they would finally just spit it out. Like you say, own up to whatever it is that you've been refusing to let go of apologize for people love a great comeback story. Look at John Travolta's life there. Dude was down and out, makes a comeback. People loved it. Uh, uh, Robert Downey Jr. The guy, everybody thought he was a fall down uh, F in the butt drunk junkie that was washed up and he comes back with uh, Iron Man. I mean, like, holy crap. So if these Hollywood clowns could, like you say, just not worry about the blackmail anymore, I mean, unless they're, we're talking about, well, I was at a, a Luciferian party where we ate a small baby and stuff like that, that I could understand them really not wanting to own up to. But then in that case, they should just shut up at the very least. You know, they, well, they should stop. Sort of. Right, right. Well, some of the people that have been coming forward over the course of many years you know, have, have said I, I participated or I was forced to or I was present and I witnessed it. Um, and that should create enough of a chain reaction right. for those that really don't want to be involved in this um, cabal, deep state, satanic uh, agenda to, to be able to say, wow, if she's able to do that, I can do it. So we can begin and, and to encourage them. But um, I think the ones that aren't coming forward are either scared for their lives um, or they want to see the results of the agenda and they're so possessed and consumed by it that they don't want to heal. They don't want to break free. They don't care. They're, they're, they're too consumed in it. So we're, you know, if, if we can get as many as we can to just separate while they have a chance, we'll be able to um, just have, have just a, a greater healing impact on how it has affected, you know, the whole collective, but I'll, I'll just leave it at that. But yeah, to me, just that Hollywood piece and, and where the entertainment industry is involved in all of this, because that's where people have lost themselves to the trance, the media and entertainment industries. Absolutely. And people listening, go to uh, Laura's YouTube page and uh, actually Dan and Michael have them as well. So go to these people's pages. Laura's putting out a video Usually, like, daily now, right? Even if it's just a short inspirational thing, you usually try to pop something up at least once a day. I don't know. I just pop whenever I pop. Yeah. I probably should just pop in a corner to myself and not go on camera. But <laughs> well, you're, you're one of the hardest working people out there right now because I don't know how many times I'll be sitting there and the, the notice pops up on my computer screen, Laura Eisenhower is live, like, a, a, a daily thing now and it's, it's great we need more voices out there to be doing this well actually we need more voices with the, pro the proper messages there's way too many voices out there and it can get conflicting and confusing for a lot of people dan do you have anything you want to add to this and then we'll uh get back to the part two cabal uh because uh, you had that come out today Actually, okay, back back to Dan. I was going to jump to Michael again. Uh, what do you have to add about anything that is really crazy, that uh, even anything like what Laura has just been talking about? And then we'll get right back to this cabal stuff because that that's still very fascinating to me. I, I was just going to say, you know, we're all participants in this. As like Laura was saying, you know, we we'll all have to do something. Um, the, the thing is, we have what's called the rule of law. And we have people who have done a tremendous amount of research that have the criminal evidence on these people. And uh, so, you know, uh, it's a hard time getting into my website because I'm having some security issues on it. Yeah, I noticed the, that earlier. The webmatrix.net, just bypass it. I don't do anything commercially on it. Just bypass it and... Uh, on the main page, there's a link called uh, Countering the Deep State. I won't say the full word. 
And there's uh, research by Dr. Martin that has the all the information that you can print out and mail to your state attorney general. You can also send it to your other law enforcement agencies, and there's other avenues. So it's What's wonderful about this is it empowers people. A lot of people think, "Why well, I, I can't do anything?" You know, you watch the mainstream news. Uh, I I monitor the mainstream news. I want to see what they're putting out there to the masses. Uh, it's hard to watch, you know, because you're watching them people. Everything's like 180 degrees of what the truth is, <laughs> and they're you know they're they're everything's toward the narrative for the that they're doing, and so. Um, you know, check out that link, uh, countering the deep, deep state. <laughs> and uh, you can communicate to these people who have the uh, responsibility to take action on, on criminal evidence. And we, we have the criminal evidence, but uh, the more voices, the, the, the better. That's what I have to say. We need more people to see the evidence. Absolutely. And I, I tried to go to your site earlier, uh, the webmatrix.net, and it wouldn't even let me bypass it. Like, I mean, it did, but it, it brought up a black page with a little picture of the rabbit, and there was nothing else there. Uh, I paid for a secure certificate, you know, just to be able to let people in, mm -hmm. uh, because Google did this where, you know, pe the small guys can't afford, you know, secure certificates right. on all their websites. And so uh, I, I've been calling them the whole week and they get, oh, we have a delay, so they're having trouble, but eventually um, the secure certificate will get installed and, you know, some browsers come up blank. A lot of them say, oh, this is a threat. Your information could be stolen and all this stuff. But right, it's, that's exactly just, what it said. Yeah, just it's click on uh, advanced and bypass and and uh, nothing's nothing's going to steal anything from anybody. Yeah, because there's great <laughs> info on there for the people listening. You, you should be checking it out. Uh, a quick shout out uh, uh, to uh, the people on TalkStream Live. We got a good crowd on there tonight, and the people in, in the chat room. Uh, if you just get a chance, you're listening. Uh, come down to Revolution Dot Radio, and uh, you can sign into the chat room, or you can just listen. And there's a navigation bar there that you can go to the merchandise tab. You can buy some swag for yourself or you can donate because we need your donations to uh, uh, buy beer for Christmas. Anyway, Michael, how how about part two? Now, you, that, that came out, was that today for your Cabal uh, articles? Yeah, that, that came out today. It was um, a channeling of uh, one of these other of planet sources that Elena Danan has uh, been working with. Uh, this was uh, a representative from the Intergalactic uh, Confederation. And, and that's an organization that um, uh, is associated with uh, seeding worlds in different galaxies with the human genome. And uh, we, we know a little bit about them because uh, they were involved in this uh, 1969 case where a Frenchman spent a year at this uh, underground base in the Himalayas uh, where he shared his genetics with them. You know, it was a voluntary program, and they told him that his genetics would be used to seed a world in another galaxy, and that's all he was told. And he was told that there were other people in this. So it seems that this, this group, they're, they're largely scientists, they come, they observe uh, different worlds, they seed them with the human genome, and they kind of like protect these worlds and watch and nurture. It like, it's like they're conducting a giant experiment. Right. And, I, and I suspect that's something to do with um, helping establish uh, human worlds and and see how they deal with all kinds of problems that are thrown their way. And and the galactic and this intergalactic uh, confederation uh, will will help instill uh, values through kind of like quasi religious type experiences, mm -hmm. uh, and and then you have the other organisations um, like the Galactic Federation or the uh, Draconian Empire or the Orion Collective, which which tend to be more kind of like uh, third density or fourth density where they battling over resources, they uh, struggle against one another, they have uh, 
armed wings, so they have battle fleets that would fight against each other. So, so there seems to be different levels of interaction. So, with this part two, we we actually get the perspective of this uh, intergalactic confederation because part one was the perspective from the uh, galactic federation about what was happening in Antarctica. So, just kind of giving that perspective of. Uh, these elites being forced to go there to negotiate the surrender, only only having five months to prepare and so forth. And and now we, we're hearing more about um, them being taken off planet and, uh, and, and that this is the way in which this intergalactic confederation solves galactic problems. It's, it's not through warfare, it's through some negotiation where those that have the power, the, you know, the, the cabal, are, are told that, look, according to our technology, uh, you know, th this planet is waking up. Uh, we, we, that, that the people are going to uh, rise up in revolt and the cabal is going to be identified. And so better for them to kind of like get out now because, you know, this wave of consciousness is rising. And I think in part one I talked about the photon belt. You know, people have been talking about the photon belt for, for decades. But again, we, we had uh, this information saying that the photon belt is very real, that it is a, a region of the uh, of the galaxy that our solar system is entering into and consciousness is raising. And and because of that, the deep state always knew that they would lose this this uh, war, this uh, information war, this this battle battle for Earth. But uh, nevertheless, they fought, they fought tooth and nail uh, to win. But now the time is up. We're, we're going deeper and deeper into this kind of uh, photon belt, and and consciousness is speeding up. I mean, uh, things are happening, and and I think this is part of why. Uh, we are seeing this kind of like quick collapse. And it's kind of happened pretty quick. I mean, what was uh, very surprising to me was that uh, Una said by 2023, this will all be a dream. What we're going through now will be like a dream um, th that will be forgotten almost. It's pretty uh, it's hard to imagine that it will be forgotten, but it will be, right, be something we pass right through. Oh, that because when you were saying that, it actually uh, about how our system is going into another section of the galaxy. I think I had told Dan about this too, and I was talking about it earlier on somebody else's show. I had had a really trippy dream. Dream. I'm in this wall, uh, in this room, but the walls were all translucent, and I'm. You can see, every, like I'm in space. It's friggin' terrifying. That's how real the dream was to me. And I don't remember my dreams. That's why this one's standing out. But uh, I'm moving through space. And I, as I'm looking out and around and below, I'm seeing not only planets and stars, but then it starts to change. So I'm seeing like geometrical shapes and, and patterns and just things that I don't even know how to put in, into words. And I just remember waking up terrified in tears and uh, shaking, but I didn't. I didn't feel scared for too long afterwards. There was almost a sense of relief. So what you were saying, really, that that's kind of trippy. <laughs> okay, sorry. Uh, go ahead. I, I digress there. Wow. Gave me a whole new meaning to that dream. Uh, okay, so we are at eight forty-four. You look like you're starting to get a little tired there, and Michael. Michael said he was uh, going to stick around for an hour, hour and a half. There are a few things I would like to get into, if you guys don't mind, um, and you guys would be the ones to talk to, especially Michael. What do you know, uh, going to Michael here, what do you know about redheaded aliens? I'm a ginger myself, so I want to know how us redheads are aliens, if you know. Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, I, I know that the, the redhead aliens were the ones that apparently were – uh, very much involved in the original seeding of, of planet Earth, that uh, um, that those like the Anunnaki, the 
Nephilim, that uh, you know the the red haired giants, uh, that the, this was one of the uh, characteristics of them. And I and I know that I, I remember Corey Good was saying uh, that there were a lot of these uh, stasis chambers that that held these uh, red headed giants that were the that were like the the Nephilim, like the, that these were the direct descendants of those that helped seed our planet, if you like, or, or those that sort of came in and and played a role in creating the planetary hierarchy. So the, the redheads go back a long, long, long way um, in, in our history. And, uh, yeah, that the, these are probably associated with the Nephilim. I, I don't know of any particular race that is associated with uh, redheads other than uh, the the Nephilim. I mean, uh, uh, Laura or Dan, do you kind of recall either anything about that? Dan? No. <laughs> Not here. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, I mean, all I can say is uh, there, there seems to be a connection with um, the Tuatha de Danan, uh, to a certain degree, I mean, we see in certain cultures like Irish, uh, Scottish, um, Indo-European kind of like where 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 is this you know kind of coming from? As far as like an ET race, ah, I heard it has something to do with like blood type, um, and then something maybe about like the Starfire, uh, which has now become Ormus. Um, they've figured out a way to turn alchemy into maybe something we ingest versus something that we attain within ourselves, which I think is the preferable method <laughs> to do soul alchemy and do the inner work. Um, and that some of those tribes uh, tended to, you know, have red hair and it was sort of a rarity. Um, some called it an anomaly, almost like saying it was a genetic distortion, which I don't agree with. Um, but I, but I mean, I just look at it for face value. It's fire to me. It's just like a very fiery energy. And, uh, Anybody that's holding that elemental, um, maybe the original dragon lines that uh, just have this sort of fire element, hey, why not, like, you know, have red hair along with it and look like <laughs> hair's on fire? You know, it's like, it, it just has a very strong warrior energy to me. And I just, I love I the vibration. Red hair is the best color. You know, I love race. the red headed women. <laughs> <laughs> I personally Sorry. don't know the exact ET race. I think, you know, I mean, ultimately, when we look at our full 12 strand DNA and all the harmonic universes that exist in our DNA, we have a genetic inheritance or connection with pretty much every race, but then, but we have a dominant genetic code that we're born into, right. which, you know, is the human vessel that we occupy. Um, so just because somebody's this and somebody's that, as far as their appearance goes, I feel like we have connection to every ET race within our own genetics. And, uh, so, um, we 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 have that. Um, I'll kind of stop there, or I'll ramble because I really don't have that one figured out. So go ahead, Dan. Okay. Uh, there was actually there's one more. We're, we're actually coming up on a break um, in about ten minutes. So uh, what? I, there was one more thing I wanted to get into, and this is I wanted to ask all of uh, all of you. We may not be able to get into one or two of you until after the break, but um, I'd heard a lot about uh people in washington and at the pentagon even saying that uh part of the reason all the cabal and elite are getting scared is because the anunnaki are real and our are on their way back here and uh there, there was a, a i heard i tried to find it earlier because i wanted to share it with you guys but I, I can't find it now. There was a, a audio of a, a guy from the Pentagon. I wish I could remember his name talking about this dead serious. Like he did not, he sounded very sincere. What have you guys heard about that? We'll start with Michael. Well, I think uh, this idea of the return of a very powerful group of uh, aliens or uh, founders, if you like, I mean, the Anunnaki, I mean, they, of course, in the Sitchin material or in the Sumerian records, uh, they are the ones that help seed the human race. Well, what we know is that uh, the this group calling that's called the Intergalactic uh, Confederation has has arrived with a very powerful fleet. 
and parked itself just around Jupiter to to observe the the changes that are happening, you know, generally in our solar system, but also on Earth because the Earth is like ground zero for our solar system because that's where the biggest kind of population, surface population is, and we have an abundance of life and so forth. So they're here to observe it. And so, you know, they know this. I mean, uh, you know, one of the very interesting aspects of all of this was, um, you remember uh, three years ago, I think it was, when uh, they discovered Oumuamua, uh, the, the the first interstellar object that oh, astronomers right. yeah. found entering our solar system, mm. that uh, they gave it the name of Scoutcraft. And it's like, well, Scoutcraft to, to what? Well, it turns out that they knew that this was a Scoutcraft for this incoming fleet. And it's, and it's not the Anunnaki per se. It's actually this group of cedars, or another name for them is the uh, Guardians, that they that they've arrived and and they've arrived, and and because they represent a kind of like a higher density consciousness, and they're also associated with this other group, which is very very powerful, um, and they they're called the Council of Nine, okay, and, and that's another layer here because the the Council of Nine is you know they they're not corporeal entities; these are discarnate entities, and you know kind of like um. Uh, very highly evolved entities that all of the galactics respect and are kind of, I guess, fearful of it might be a word for them, um, and that they're connected with uh, kind of like uh, the, the the foundational gods, if you like. Um, in the in the Egyptian mythology, you have uh, the Aeneid, you know, the the nine original gods that set up, um, that are at the core of the Egyptian religion. Well, well, this is connected to this group, the Council of Nine. Okay. So, yeah, so these groups came in just recently because they come to observe how humanity liberates itself because they know this liberation is, is you know, humanity was either going to liberate itself or self-implode, you know, because we're entering the photon belt. Mm-hmm. But we we haven't we're not self imploding you know we've we've gone past that danger point uh, we've got our act together we didn't we didn't start another another third world we didn't start another world war um, they're trying really hard though you think we're past that danger point yeah totally totally past okay. it I mean it's I'm going to trust happen. you Michael it's just, because it's just you're a lot of posturing it's just a lot of posturing I mean the 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 people that are really making the decisions the, the white hats. Uh, you know, they'll make sure that there's not going to be anything like a, a world war because a world war w- would save the deep state. Mm. You know, that that would be what would keep the deep state in power, or at least they they would be able to get everything that they want through a world war. But because the world war isn't happening, because uh, the global economy is is being kind of like uh, closely monitored and you know, the, the various ways in which the cabal was able to generate the money that they needed has been cut off. They're, they're kind of desperate. And, and this is this is why, yeah, and this was all foreseen, you know, it's like, because the thing is, with, with galactics, you know, the most powerful technology is, is really like temporal technologies, those that can see further out ahead. You know, they're the ones that are going to have the strategic advantage. So, so the Council of Nine, uh, this intergalactic confederation, you know, they have the most advanced technologies because they're the more highly evolved consciousness. So they can see further ahead and they've come because they know humanity is, is going to win. Uh, freedom is, is, is about to break out. Uh, the day of the uh, deep state is, is about to end and the elite, are essentially leaving. They're, they're escaping while they can, while they can, because they don't want to be around when people suddenly wake up and found out, hey, you know, you made me do this to my and look, 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 my kids have problems, and mm-hmm. you know, when people start realizing what's going on, I mean, 
when we come back, we are going to get back into this. I have so many things written down. Michael's going to stick around for a little bit more, Michael. Yep. Yep. And uh, we'll be back with Laura and Dan. And uh, I don't have anything to cut to right now, but I know the music's about to start. So listeners come down to revolution dot radio, uh, join Chatsy, get yourself a name. There's great people in there with great information, pop up mm-hmm. movies and videos and stuff that I've forgotten that I thought I knew. There's the music. Okay, we'll be back after the break. <laughs> 